In the name of brethren, peace of the Lord Jesus, let's open our Bibles, the first book of the Bible, book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 1, Genesis 15, 1. Are uh, the brethren listening? Amen. Amen. The text is this one that is, is the projection. God encourages Abram and promises a son, and that's what the Bible says. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, do not be afraid, Abram, I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Verse 5 says the following, Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven, and count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Amen. The word of the Lord speaks regarding a servant called Abram. In the Bible, it says that Abram has gone through several experiences and trials and tribulations and adversities, um, trouble with his family and fighting. The Bible says that God comes to him and says, Abram, get out of your house and from the midst of your relatives and I'll make you into a great nation. So he hears the voice of the Lord and he does according to what God had ordained him. The word tells my brethren that Abram, he leaves from the midst of the Chaldeans, he has goes to Egypt, had problems in Egypt, and he comes out of Egypt. So he had problems with family members that, that were with him. It was uh, even a little bit of a disobedience from his part because he was supposed to leave all his relatives, but God provided all things and do not prevent this from make difficult the project of God on the life of Abram. Because until this point he was still called Abram. And the word says that this nephew, he went through a trial, difficulty. He was taken captive and Abram was there and brought Lot back and rescued his family and his home. In all of this, in, in all of this, Abram saw the hand of God operating on his life and on his behalf and on his benefit, protecting, delivering, and supplying to all his needs and doing everything that was necessary for the will of God to be fulfilled on the life of Abram. And God is faithful. And God will always be faithful to His Word, to His promises. The Word says that heaven and earth may pass, but the Word of the Lord will always be fulfilled. So we see that God has always been with Abraham in every one of His paths that He walked through. And there is a war. Abram was victorious in this war. So then, there is a war. And he is victorious out of this war. The word says that he meets with a man, a king. This king was... He, this king has had a kingdom called Shalem. And his name was... Melchizedek. He was the priest of the high God, most high God, and as it says in the Old Testament, it typifies our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he goes out to meet with Abraham. So we see the privilege that this man has 
in walking in the presence of the Lord. Abram, he has a supper with Melchizedek that typifies Christ. So he participates of the supper, and of the supper there was bread and wine, body and blood, pointing out to the perfect project of God in the life of Abram. The one says that Abram, after all of this, having gone through all of those things, and having had all those experiences with God, Abram now, he was discouraged. Abram was now fearful. And this is interesting. We are servants of God. With our experiences with God, we go through trials and difficulties and adversities. God delivers us from everything. He honors His Word in our lives. But there are moments in which we find ourselves like this, worried, fearful, discouraged. And there is a the concern of Abram at this moment was with his house, with his home, with his family, with the continuity of the plan and the project of God as an inheritance. And the Bible says, my brethren, that at that moment, that Abram was found at that moment discouraged, fearing things around him, God presents himself to Abram. It is interesting that it's always in situations like this, moments of tiredness and worry and discouragement and fear, that God presents himself to man to bring encouragement to men, to bring peace to men, to bring comfort to men, to be, bring refreshing to men. And that's what the Lord was doing in the life of Abram at that moment, bringing peace, comfort, and refreshing in the life of Abram, and telling Abram, Abram, I am with you. I'm the Lord, your God. I will never let you down. My plan, my promise, will have continuity upon your life. So the Bible says, my brethren, that after going through all of this, God gave him a vision and, and speaks to Abram. God always uses the spiritual gifts to speak to our lives. The Bible says that God he meets with us in dreams and visions. However, a few does not pay, do not pay attention to this. But here, Abram, he paid attention to it, to the visitation of God in his life, in his home, in his house. God, through a vision, reveals himself and speaks to Abram. He says, he speaks what was in the heart of Abram. Because God searches our heart. He knows what is in my heart and He knows what is in your heart. Why do we need to be discouraged? Why do we need to be afraid? Why do we need to be worried? And the Lord comes to Abram and tells him, Abram, do not be afraid. My brother and sister, I don't know what, what you're going through in your life, a moment of fear and concern and discouragement, but the Lord has a word for you, he has a word for me, he has a word for each one of us. Do not be afraid. I helped you to this day, and I will continue to help you. I rescued you, and I will continue to rescue. I provided all things, and I will continue to provide all things. In the New Testament, the Bible also speaks about other men that have been called by God. I already placed it there. No, you are in the mute. I'm sorry. The Bible says that in the New Testament, 
that when he met his friend, Andrew. When they would throw the net on the sea, fishing net on the sea, Jesus passed and he said, follow me. And they left their fishing net and immediately followed Jesus. All the sustenance of those men, they it came from the sea. The sea typifies the world. And say we're being sustained by the world, sustained by the earth and the things, and, and began to be sustained by heaven for the one who had called them. God had invited them to walk with them to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And after that, they called two other men, James and John. They were in the boat with, with Jesus. The boat speaks of the inheritance, it speaks of the establishment and the familial commitment. It speaks of eternal inheritance, the earthly inheritance. But when the Lord called them, they leave their earthly inheritance and now they depart in order to get for them a heavenly inheritance. Matthew, he was working as a tax collector and the Lord calls him and the word says that he gets up, he makes a stand and he changes his behavior and follows Jesus. And later on, Jesus comes to those men, not only these five that were mentioned here, but for the twelve, the twelve disciples of Jesus, he asks a question to them. The question at that day for his disciples was the following. When I sent you, was by any chance something lacking for you? And the word says that they gave an answer to Jesus. And they answered nothing because they didn't lack anything. And why? Because the Lord was their shepherd. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And while we have, we also have a Lord as our shepherd, nothing will be lacking in our lives. In the same way it was with the life of Abram. He went through trials and difficulties, but he didn't lack anything because God supplied to Abram all his needs. And at that meeting with Melchizedek, who typifies Jesus, when we have a supper with Jesus, he offers two things, bread and wine. And that's why he uh, took part at that moment. Bread speaks about the sustenance, the resource, material and spiritual, because Jesus is the living bread that came down from heaven. So when we pick up there from the prayer of Jesus, he says, my daily bread give us today, Lord. Jesus is daily bread that gives us. That's why he said, I am with you every day until the end of the, the ages. And they heard. And the wine, wine to remove discouragement. Wine is to remove fear. The wine is the presence of the Holy Spirit and bring joy to our hearts. And they had this experience of the wine and, and the bread. And they took part in this, this wine and it brings joy to his heart. And in this supper, the Bible says, my brethren, that he decided to give back to the Lord and thank the Lord for all the benefits that he had done for him. And he, he gives to God part of what God had given to him to that point. He returned to God part of what God one day operated and had done on his life, on his behalf, and to his benefit. So now, God presents to himself in a vision and says, do not be afraid. There is no reason for you to be afraid. I am the Lord. I will help you, like the Son says. And he says more. I am your shield. So in all the words, I, I protect you. I deliver you. I sustain you with my righteous hand. So if, if why do I why do I need to be afraid if God is my shield? What is going to happen to me if God is protecting me? If He is delivering me from any evil? So 
that's what God was telling to Abram. Abram, I, I protect you, I hide you, I deliver you from any evil. Nothing will happen, nothing will take place in your life that I do not allow. Because I'm a shield, I'm your God, and nothing is greater than God. Anything can, any problems may arise there are there are great, but nothing is greater than our God, because our God is great. So the Lord comes to Abraham and said, "I'm your shield. I protect you. I will deliver you. I will supply to all your needs. I sustain you." It was a guarantee. It was not a human guarantee. I can say that it will sustain uh, someone, but if uh, a problem arises that is greater than me, but there is no one that is greater than God. God is the greatest, so then the word is a guarantee that he is the shield of Abraham. And he says more. You have a great reward. What is a word? Is is a uh, reward. Now, going back to the apostles of Jesus, he, they came to Jesus and they asked, Jesus, we left everything behind in order to follow you. What are we going to receive? What is going to be our reward? We're going to leave everything in order to follow you? Leave family, the boat, and the uh, fishing net, leaving our job as a tax collector and Jesus comes to them and, and say and says you receive a hundred times more and on the new life you receive eternal life so God is the shield and he is also a great reward he's a great compensation the great reward of God is Christ Jesus the great the reward of God is to forgive our failures and sins and our transgressions. That's why God at that moment, he's, He does something interesting to Abram. And that's what God wants to do to your life. You may be involved with concerns and trials and discouragement, feeling afraid. The Lord does something interesting. He removes Abram to the outside. He plucks him out. He removes Abram out of that place, out of his concerns, out of his fears, out of his anxieties, outside of his uh, discouragement. And only God can do this to take us out of those things, of the depression, of the infirmities, the violence. So he goes there and takes out Abram. He removes Abram from that place. He brings him to a new place. And what was this place? He removes Abram from their earthly thoughts in order to show him his heavenly plan, his project. And God comes to Abram and says, Look now to heaven. God told Abram to look to heaven, the same sky that we all can see. And he also asked to look to the second and third heaven. And Paul speaks about this. I went to the third heaven. So God brings Abram to heavens and shows the heavens to Abram. He shows how much a project of God is great to Abram. My brethren, many times we need to go through this experience with God. God take his, taking us out of from the midst of the concerns, of the discouragement, the tiredness of the daily life, of the fears, the anxieties of this life, and to bring us out. He show to us how great he is, how great is his project for you, for me, for each one of us. Abram was not only called, he was chosen, and you, my brother and sister, you are chosen one. God chose you, 
chose you. He elected you. God reserved for Abraham an inheritance, a land. And God, Jesus, he makes a promise to us as well. And what is the promise of Jesus? That's the promise that he gave to us, eternal life. So there's nothing for us to be afraid of. There's nothing to be worried about because the Lord is protecting us. He's delivering us. He's being a shield for our life, for our homes, for our family members. Uh, God took him out and he was able to see the plan of God. And he's, God says, now look at this, count the stars and see my plans for you. You can't count. My brother and sister, are you able to count the countless plans that God has for your life? The countless blessings and experiences the God, that God has to give to you, to a home, to a family. If you can, then do this. God asks Abram to look to the sky and to look to the stars and count them. And he says, your seed is going to be like this, your inheritance. My brethren, God has for us an inheritance, an eternal inheritance, a place in heaven, a place in eternity. And the word of the Lord says, my brethren, that after this experience, after this vision, after this moment he was taken out of that place and took him to the heavens, after God has spoken to him, the heart of Abram changed. He was no longer afraid. He did not question. He was no longer worried. But now he did one thing. He believed on the Lord and he trusted on the Lord. He had faith. The word says that the faith was counted as righteousness of Abraham because he believed in the Lord and the project of God was fulfilled in his life. In the same way, Jesus says, if you believe, you see the glory of God. God has a plan, a gracious plan for our lives. But you need to believe, because without faith, my brethren, my brother and sister, there is no way to please the Lord. Abram pleased the Lord at that day. And tonight, we have this opportunity to please God. And how am I going to please God tonight? Believing that God is my shield believing that God is my help, believing that God is my fortress, believing that God is a present help in, in the moment of anguish, when hiding in the shelter of the Most High God, like the Psalm 46 says, even the waters roar and disturb me, I continue trusting on the Lord, blessed be them in the Lord, and this is the blessing. And this is the faith. This is the feeling in our hearts that causes that the justice of God may be fulfilled in our lives. Abraham was not justified by works of men. He was justified by faith. Because the faith is a firm foundation of the things that are not seen, but they are the proof of the things that are waiting for us in heaven. He, blessed be the name of the Lord. He didn't see, but he believed in the project of God that was fulfilled in his life. And my brother and sister, the Lord is now inviting you for this, for you to believe in the Lord so that the project of God may be fulfilled in your life, in your home, in your house. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In order to close this message, verse 13, 18 says the following, At the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram. My brother and sister, on this day, at this hour, this exact moment, like the word says, if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. If you believe in the Lord, today, now, at this exact moment, God will establish a covenant with you. God will make an alliance with you. He will have a new commitment with you. And your plans will never fall to the ground. Call the project of God 
the, the one he showed to Abraham in heaven will be fulfilled in your, on earth, in your life, in your home, because God guarantees his word, because God is our refuge. He is our fortress. He is our help very present in the moment of anguish. God is this, this shield that is written here on the word of God. This protection, this deliverance that comes through the person of, the, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in a vision. The Lord communicated, the Lord spoke, God related to Abram. And he believed in this vision. He believed in the plan and the project and covenant of the Lord to him. And he believed in what God had revealed to his life. And on that same day, the Lord made a new covenant with Abram. And tonight, Lord, the Lord has shown through a spiritual gift a few houses, a few homes. The roof of the house, the protection, was compromised because of the sun, of the storms, the difficulties, of the adversities, the trials, the tribulations, the problems, the discouragement, the tiredness, the fear, that cause us, cause the protection, the shield, looks like we're going to be, it's going to falter. But the faith in the life of some is maybe compromised at this moment. But this roof was about to be destroyed. But tonight, this day, the Lord wants to establish a new covenant with you, my brother and sister, with you, with your house, with your family members. And the covenant is this, if you believe in what the Lord has revealed for your life, if you believe in the words of the Lord, you will see the glory of God. You will see the plan of God being fulfilled in your life. Jesus, He is this great reward. Jesus is the shield and Jesus is the great reward. The word says that he believed in the Lord. He was given to him as righteousness. And you know what the word... Sometimes a, a person has a process... Um, it's a process open against a person. It's a consequence of a, a crime that a person may have committed. It's an imputation. It's the word that I'm explaining. But in this process... This person is absolved of the accusation. The person is considered as blameless. And the word says that this it was imputation of justice. It was an imputation. There was a resource because God removed the blame of Abram. That's that's important. We are all are, are blamed. We are blamed. We all have been sinned, and the word of, of sin is death, but the Lord removed all those things from the life of Abraham. And God is now want to remove all the blame, all the feeling that may be in your soul, in your mind, in your heart, all the concern, anguish, sadness, depression, pain, suffering, because the Lord wants to impute by His faith his justice. And what is the justice of God? Is Christ Jesus. When he comes, he applies the justice of God. He purifies us, he purifies of every sin and give us uh, a place in heaven, an inheritance, an eternity. Amen? Let's finish the service. Sing a song that is going to be under projection.
to Jesus. There is no disease or blame. The storm will calm down. His word is pure, his shield for whoever believes in him. But brother, that's exactly this. The word of God is a shield for the ones who believe in him. There's no storm or disease, there's no blame or infirmity. There's no adversity that God may not give a solution to, that the Lord may not rescue from. Amen. Let us stand up. Let's glorify the name of the Lord. We praise you. We're thankful for this moment in which we have been able to participate in fellowship for the blessing that you have given us, the reward, which is the shield for the faith that you have added to our lives in our hearts for the covenant, for their lives, for the agreement that you have made with us through the blood of Jesus and the cross of Calvary. Lord, I thank you and praise you because we have no use to word about tomorrow because every day our bread, our daily bread that comes down from heaven, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is present to supply to all our needs. I want to praise you and thank you and glorify you because you have sustained us in every situation and through your word, Lord. I want to praise you because we know that we will, through it, come to your eternity. Give us a night in peace in your presence. We pray. I'm very really thankful for everything, for the, all the benefits in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, Oh, good and eternal Father, that should intend the consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, my brethren. The service is over. We are going to greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. And remember that tomorrow we are going to have the Sunday school in the usual time. And once again, 7.30, not 8, 7.30, we are going to have yet another service of glorification of the name of the Lord. Amen. Now the brethren came celebrate and open up the microphone. I want to congratulate David. Happy birthday. Amen. 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 Amen.